Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and welcome also to the current timeline. You may have noticed that I'm not wearing the exact same outfit that I've been wearing in the last 10 videos, and also my hair is longer, so time has definitely passed. The date today is October 30th, 2023. So going to release this very close to the time of recording and going to try to do that moving forward for two reasons. One, I want to allow more time for creative inspiration between each video. And two, I want the time and bandwidth to be able to properly develop the quality of each video as I release each one. So with that said, and before we dive into the video, a little bit of bookkeeping that I need to do. <laughs> Firstly, you may have noticed that I'm actually holding the microphone this time instead of keeping it by my neck. That's for a few reasons. One, I found that this produces better audio quality. And two, I don't want to buy a very expensive microphone. So we're going to do this since this gives me the best audio quality. And also, I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to... The Paper Mate Eraser Mate 1.0 millimeter. You can erase marks that you make from this pen, folks, so that's pretty cool. But also, it serves as a really great mic holder, which I'm using it as right now. Shout out, Paper Mate. This is non sponsored, by the way, believe it or not. And I think that's actually it, so not a lot of bookkeeping. So let's get started with the video. I spent the last two weeks in Germany and just wanted to recap my time, but more importantly, dive into four things that I really enjoyed and four things that I disliked. Some of the takes are a little bit more nuanced, but some are probably really obvious if you've visited Europe before. So we went to Germany October 3rd for Oktoberfest initially, and then took a train up to Dusseldorf, and we saw Essen Spiel, which is a board game convention, and we went to a hard style festival called Syndicate. We took the train over to Berlin, hung out there for a few days, and then went back to Munich. I went with my brother, by the way. This was kind of a really important trip for me because I've never done a one-to-one -one trip internationally with my brother before. So I thought in my old age, me being 28 now, me almost forgetting here, um, yeah, 28 now, thought it would be a great idea. And overall, it was really great. I really, really enjoyed my time, but here are a few things that I liked and did not like while I was in Germany. One thing that I really enjoyed while I was in Germany was that there were Nutri labels that were attached to most items in local grocery stores. I visited Netto Grocery Store, Aldi, and Lidl, L-I-D-L. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I visited those three grocery stores pretty often, and I found that a lot of the grocery items and produce had these labels on the foods that were pretty consistent with what I saw food is healthy or not. Typically, they prioritized vegetarian food that were whole foods and also had a decently high protein content. So I should preface this a little bit with the fact that I love going to local produce markets whenever I travel, and this was initially born out of frugality and health reasons. I find that it's really hard to find healthy food that sits well whenever I travel, I think especially as a tourist. And also food is, is pretty expensive, so having a nice location to get food that you can guarantee be healthy was, was really reassuring. So that's kind of what started me going into produce aisles whenever I travel. And one thing that I really grew to appreciate as well that was a great added benefit was being able to have a greater understanding of locally sourced versions of ingredients that we have here in the States, as well as appreciating some of the more novel ingredients or popular ingredients of the local nation or region, like for instance, sardines in Portugal or different types of muesli in Europe, other European countries or maybe the raw fish and other types of vegetables and pickled vegetables in Japan, etc. Those are just some examples. Two things that I typically look at is obviously the name of the food and also the macros. I use Google Lens to look at some of the other attributes as well, like the ingredient list, but sometimes it's really hard to have to go through all three and ever most ingredients and make sure that uh, it is healthy. Sometimes the process is very long, and so having a Nutri score that sort of corroborated that very much aligned with I consider to be healthy. So it was easier for me to pick ingredients whenever I travel. But I also appreciated that even for local residents, it's going to be a really great thing that the government or whatever organization is in charge of Nutri score has a sort of guideline that can be followed by local citizens to know what's healthy or not. Because I know that at least here in the states, it's really hard to know like 
what is healthy, what is not. It, it's nuanced because everyone's body is different. Everybody has different goals, but it's nice to have a good common standard that I felt like the Nutri-Score on foods did have. The second thing I really loved about Germany was that there was a very active community. Whenever we were outside for any reason, we always saw at least a double digit amount of bikes. Even if we were sitting there for five minutes, whether we were in Munich, whether we were in Dusseldorf, whether we were in Berlin, there was such an active biking culture. It was very common to see a parent driving their kid around, whether it be like a baby or whatnot, just in a, in a bike all around town. So I really appreciated that. And also this translated to great support for e-scooters whenever we were in the different cities. One thing I love doing whenever I visit different cities, especially where safe and appropriate, is to use e-scooters to go to different locations because it helps me get a feel for the city. And then also it's fun. I, I really enjoy e-scootering. I felt like with Germany, the vibe generally was across the cities we visited that there were strict-ish parking laws. There were designated parking areas for scooters. And if there weren't, there were specific rules and regulations around how you should park your scooter to avoid pretty steep fines. In general, the city was pretty organized and the scooters were well organized around the city such that it was a sustainable activity and one that continued to be supported with lots of different e-scooter options no matter where you are in each city. So I really, really did appreciate that. In addition to biking and e-scootering, another thing that I really enjoyed was that there were a lot of parks that were well maintained, they were accessible. In addition, they were also very large. And this includes court gardens, which were called Hof Gardens in Germany, that were both present in Munich, as well as Dusseldorf. We didn't visit any in Berlin, but they also have very large park areas there too. Especially one thing that I loved was that there were so many calisthenics parks across all the cities that we visited. I'm a a little biased because I love calisthenics parks. I don't have to sell this. I don't want to sell this, but I love that it gives adults the possibility to work out in a outdoor environment. And it's just, just feels pleasant, you know, when the sun is out. So it was really reassuring and nice to see a lot of outdoor recreational areas for kids, but also for adults. I like that there was a lot of support for adults too. The third thing is that Germany has a very, very deep rooted board game culture. And if you know anything about me, you know that I absolutely love board games. I actually made a whole video on three board games I would recommend anybody start with if they're looking to get into the hobby. Well, Germany is ground zero for that stuff. My brother and I went to the largest board game convention in the world called Spiel in Dusseldorf, Germany. Spiel means game, by the way, in German. This board game convention was incredibly pleasant. If I were to describe the experience in a few sentences, I would say that there were six giant rooms four of which were mostly full of people selling board games or looking to play test board games they wanted to release. It was surprisingly very easy to just sit down at a table where other people were sitting and just play games with people. So it didn't feel like there was a lot of pressure of, oh, you should play this game and then buy it. It just really felt like a community of people that wanted to just play games and to spread that love for that to others. And I learned that a lot of the locals there actually used to play board games a lot growing up. It was very common to rent board games from libraries and it was a quintessential part of the German childhood experience. The last thing that I really enjoyed about Germany was hard style music. So as I mentioned before, my brother and I went to a hard style festival called Syndicate while we were in Germany and really hard style got on my radar back in the 2000s when jump style, which is a kind of dance trend, was taking the internet by storm. And I used, I used to love dancing jump style and the music that people danced to was actually called hard style. Um, and when traveling to Germany, I realized that a lot of the music for hard style was centered around the Netherlands. And I really thought that it would be cool to try to find a community that really appreciated jump style or to see if there was any conventions and lo and behold one of the big conventions of hard style was in germany so we decided to visit what is hard style exactly the google definition is hard style is a fast-paced electronic dance music genre with heavy kick drums distorted melodies and a high energy vibe originating from netherlands in the early 2000s but if i were to just break it down kind of and, and maybe make it a little bit more tangible i'd say that it is basically Pretty fast music with a, with whenever there is a bass drop, there is a very unique kick to it. So I'll, I'll give you guys some examples. So let's, let me show you.
let's go into the dislikes. So the number one gripe I really had with Germany was that the Deutsche Bahn system, which is their train system, was extremely unreliable. A lot of my trip hinged on going from one city to another city and that being like a four hour train ride from each one going from Munich to Dusseldorf that's like a five hour ride Dusseldorf to Berlin that's around a four hour ride and then Berlin back to Munich that's another four hour ride so there were cross-country trips and so it was really great that there was support for that but very often trains would get canceled and that was also sucky because if i had reserved a seat beforehand on a train on a cross-country trip oftentimes when a train gets canceled you no longer have that reservation and the problem became that if we took the next train and that train happened to be really busy we'd often not get a seat at least for the first hour or so so when we were going from munich to dusseldorf we didn't have a seat for an hour and then going from dusseldorf to berlin it really sucked because i didn't have a seat for four hours thankfully I ended up making a seat out of a very small ledge thankful that i have a small butt now because honestly i wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise there was just nowhere to sit at that point people were sitting on the stairs right next to the door which felt pretty unsafe but that's just how desperate the situation was for four hours people were standing and i think i just maybe got dealt a bad hand but that was two legs of our three leg journey so it was pretty shitty to to experience that to be honest especially considering the length of each ride and my second gripe was the cash only nature of transactions in germany and this is totally a common thing in Europe. So if you do ever travel to Europe or plan on it, just know cash is king in Germany and also just elsewhere too. It's worth keeping cash whenever you travel. This really bit us in the butt in two places. The first was in some of the more touristy streets when we were in Munich or Berlin, we had often dined and found out afterwards they only took cash. So we had to make an ATM withdrawal, which obviously has fees, etc. So that really sucked. I think we were just under the wrong impression because we heard that in some of the more popular sit populated parts of the city, card is pretty standard and i think that might have been false information so the second place that it really sucked was when we were finding parking for the hardstyle festival the parking attendants only took cash and didn't know where to find an atm and that was really difficult to navigate because a lot of the atms that we tried to find through google maps weren't fully updated so we'd be going driving from place to place that were miles apart sometimes just looking for an atm and we ended up taking us 30 minutes just to find an ATM and then 20 minutes to drive back. So it was like a 50 minute experience with a lot of mishaps that kind of made it that amount of time. But it was overall a very tough experience to have to spend that much time to get the money. Next thing was there was no free tap water. Oh my God, that one really sucked. I usually stay super hydrated. I drink about a gallon of water every day. I try to drink about a gallon of water every day, I'll be honest. That was really hard to do in Germany, mostly because, I mean, I don't mind buying water, but just having to account to have to buy water um, beforehand was something I wasn't used to doing. So it led, it led us really prone to getting dehydrated because it just wasn't as easy to get tap water. And I didn't want to pay $5 for a bottle of water, which it was sometimes five to sometimes even up to eight. These guys are really pleasing us on tap water, uh, us Americans on tap water. But I guess that's just something we take for granted. Anyway, I learned that I love America for that. <laughs> um, lastly, this is going to be a hot take. I did not like the food in Germany. I think particularly the traditional food while I was in Germany, or what was purported to be traditional. A lot of the food that I ate was heavily centered around sausages, bread, and potatoes, which is fine. I felt like a lot of the food that I was exposed to was very oily and didn't have a lot of flavor. Um, I think partially was because at beer gardens and also at festivals like Oktoberfest, that is to be expected. And I also think that maybe these foods are the brand for tourists to enjoy because I also know that sauerkraut is a German creation or has origins in Germany. And I love sauerkraut and other pickled vegetables. So I might have been exposed to kind of the wrong types of food. But while I was there, one thing I did do was I leaned a lot on Mediterranean Californian and Mexican inspired restaurants. A few restaurants that me and my brother really enjoyed that I think really hit the balance of health, taste, and cost were Chupanga, which honestly reminded me of Chipotle, but I liked it a lot better. La Burrita and Fatouche, all amazing restaurants. And that's it. So those are my likes and dislikes. Love the Nutri scores, love the active culture, love the board games, love the hard style community there. 
loved, loved, loved that. I didn't like the train system. I didn't like the fact that Germany is heavily cash only. I didn't like the expensive, inaccessible tap water, frequently inaccessible. And finally, I did not like the food. Um, and I'm really sorry to, sorry to say that. But anyway, that's my experience in Germany. I hope that this was useful to you if you want to travel to Germany or at least entertaining. That being said, I'll see you next time and I will not be wearing the same fit because I'll be recording it probably in a few days from today. Thank you. See you later.